This tutorial is for 5th grade, Module 4, Lesson 4. In this lesson, we're going to continue to look at the quotient, or the answer to a division problem, when the dividend, the number we're starting with, is smaller than the divisor, the number we're going to divide it by. And we're also going to relate that to the forgiving method of division. So in this problem, I have 1 divided by 3. And you can see by my diagram that I've taken the one whole and I've divided it into three equal pieces. So each of those pieces would be considered one-third. And again, when we're looking at division, we look at one group after we've done our dividing. So here I'm going to look at just one group out of the three. That one group is one-third, and that explains why one divided by three equals one-third. Over here, we've done the same problem using the forgiving method of division. In the division bracket, the dividend goes on the inside and the divisor on the outside. The question I can ask myself is, what could I take three times to get me an answer of one? And I've shown that answer as one-third. Three times one-third is the same thing as one-third plus one-third plus one-third, which would equal three-thirds, which equals one. So 3 times 1 third is the same thing as 1, so that's what I've subtracted. 1 minus 1 is 0, and that means my answer is 1 third. Here I have the problem 2 divided by 3. I'm going to use the same pictorial representation that we did in Lesson 2. I'll start with my two tape diagrams that represent the two holes. I'm going to divide each one into three equal pieces. So let's do this and then I'll label each piece. So each piece would be one-third. Once I'm done labeling, I now have to divide the entire di diagram into three equal groups. So here's one group, my second group, and my third group. My answer is the amount in one group. So I can see my answer is two-thirds. Now let's show that on our forgiving method diagram over here. So I'll start with 2 in the middle. That's my div dividend. I'm going to divide that by 3. I'm going to start thinking of the fact that 3 thirds equals 1 whole. So I can subtract that 1 whole to start with. So I'm going to start by saying I can take 3 times 1 third and get an answer of 1 and I'll subtract that from the two holes. That leaves me with one hole. I'm going to do that same process. Three times one-third equals one. So I'll subtract that, and I have no remainder. I combine my answers on the outside of the bracket to get my final quotient. One-third plus one-third equals two-thirds, and that matches the answer I got with my tape diagrams. Here's another example. This time I'm dividing 3 by 5. I have my three tape diagrams. I'll start by dividing each one into five equal pieces. And then I'll label each piece as one-fifth. Once I have everything labeled, I'll now divide it into five equal groups. So here's one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, and five groups. My answer is the amount in one group, and that looks like three-fifths. So the answer to three divided by th five is three-fifths. Now let's show it on the forgiving method bracket. So we'll start with three divided by five. This time I'm going to focus on the idea that five-fifths equals one whole. So if I take five times one-fifth, that would give me five-fifths. And that equals 1, so I'll subtract 1, and I get a remainder of 2. I'm going to do the same thing. 5 times another 1 fifth would be 5 fifths, which is equal to 1. I'll subtract that, and I have 1 left over. So let's do that one more time. 5 times 1 fifth is 5 fifths, which is equal to 1. I'll subtract. I have nothing left over. I combine all three of my answers to show that 3 divided by 5 equals 3 fifths. In the next section, we're given a chart where we can look at the relationship between division expressions, fractions, whole numbers, 
and forgiving method of division. The first problem is 13 divided by 3. We have already looked at that number pattern where we know as a fraction we could express 13 divided by 3 as 13 thirds. The next question says, between which two whole numbers would my answer fall? So I'm going to go back to that 13 thirds idea. If I think about thirds, it takes three to make a whole, so I can make four holes out of 12 thirds. I have 13 thirds, so that would give me one more third. So my answer would be four and one third, and that means it falls between the whole numbers four and five. Looking at the forgiving method of division, my problem is 13 divided by 3. Well, I can take 4 times 3 and get 12, so I pull that out. I have 1 left over. And I can then take 3 times 1 third, which equals 1. I subtract that. I have nothing left over. Combine my answers for a final quotient of 4 and 1 third. Let's look at another example. Here I've been given the problem 7 divided by 6, so it's a fraction that would be 7 sixths. And again, it falls between the whole numbers of 1 and 2. I can think of 7 sixths as 6 sixths, which is equal to 1, and 1 more sixth. So my answer would be 1 and 1 sixth, and that falls between the whole numbers of 1 and 2. Now let's work this as a division problem on our partial quotient bracket here. I have 7 divided by 6. Well, I can take one group of 6 out of 7. That leaves me with one whole. And I know if I take 6 groups of 1 6, that would be 6 6, which is equal to one whole. So I subtract that, and I have nothing left over. I combine my answers for a quotient of 1 and 1 6. And let's look at one more sample. Here, I don't have my division expression, but I do have the fraction, 51 tenths. That means my expression must have been 51 divided by 10. Now let's find out between which two whole numbers our answer would fall. So 51 tenths could be considered the same thing as 50 tenths and 1 tenth. 50 tenths is the same as 5. So I know my answer will fall between the whole numbers of 5 and 6, because the answer will be 5 and 1 tenth. Now let's work it as a partial quotient answer. Here I'm going to start as 51 divided by 10. Well, I can get 5 groups of 10 out of 51. That would be 50, and I have 1 left over. I can take 10 times 1 tenth to give me an answer of 1, so I'll subtract that 1 and I have no remainder. So my final answer is 5 and 1 tenth. So you can see all the different connections we can make with fractions and division by going through this process.